to Marin Poets Live. I'm Nishaba Franklin. I work at the Fairfax Library and I love poetry. So it is a special pleasure for me to share this opportunity to introduce you to poets from our county in the flesh, as it were, as they read and discuss their work. Monthly tapings will be broadcast on Marin TV and then become part of a special page on our website, along with biographies of the poets and links to our collection. This is a partnership with the Marin Poetry Center. A common thread throughout our programs will be discovering how living in Marin has influenced their poetry. Those of you who already love poetry will appreciate this direct transmission from the poet to the listener, you. Those who might think of poetry as esoteric or abstract will discover how it can sing when read aloud. For our seventh program, we will feature Claudia Chaplin and Giovanni Singleton. And hello, Claudia. Welcome. Oh, thank you, Nishama. It's an honor to be here. And it's an honor to have you. And let's just plunge right in with a poem that perhaps has a link to where we live. My poetry is strongly influenced by place. It always has been. And since I've been in West Marin, most of the poetry comes out of that place. But I thought I'd read a po poem that uh, relates to all of Marin. This is Night of the Deer. And it came about because I was driving from the Marin Art and Garden Center one night back home to Stinson Beach, and I kept seeing deer everywhere. Ellipse. Last night, I saw more deer than I have seen all year. Creek. My gaze met the black king's stare as we both stood there. Dusk. The doe through leaves moves, not seeing past her prancing hooves. Emergency. Crossing the street, a young buck casually dared my pickup truck mystery. In the shadow of a tree, a doe stands easily. Slide Ranch, a couple scampered across the highway, then up the hillside leaped away. Brittle grass, while two little fawns together softly waited for their mother. Stars to keep me from sleeping and the wheels careening. Village lights last night. I saw eight deer on the drive from there to here. Guardian, it seemed that everywhere I went that night, there was a deer event. That is so charming. And all those internal and external rhymes, boy, does it play very beautifully, as I'm sure your perception on the road played with those deer who are both charming and terrifying. <laughs> True. Yes. True. Once I almost hit one. Oh, yes. Yes. Well, uh, most of my poetry now is not rhymed, but I did uh -huh. early on. I've been writing poetry all my life, uh -huh. and of course, my beginnings were with rhyme poetry, that's what I read. That's what we had. <laughs> and uh, my, my first poems were quatrains with meter and rhyme. And, mm -hmm. and that comes naturally to me. And so I generally try to avoid it. But, <laughs> ah, but it's, it's, it's embedded in there. And I think rhyming sings and dances. It has its, it has its uses. Yes. So that's yeah. very, very charming. And thank you very much. How about uh, another poem while All right. we're on a roll? Here's another Marin poem, not rhymed, Connecting Waters. This poem started with the second verse oh. here in Marin. And I had been invited to do the opening poem at the Geography of Hope conference on March 11, 2011. And on driving from Stinson Beach to Point Reyes, I am hearing about the tsunami in Japan. And I wrote this poem and read this, which I've never done before, read a poem that I had first draft <laughs> written. Connecting waters. There, where once a city hummed at the edge of the land, a tsunami of glowing bodies where once a market confused survivors wander, lost where once was home, broken 
under mudded layers of grief snowed over silence where hearts once sang. Here in Marin, the steaming mountain's silver necklace embraces cougar, coon, fox, and finch. The Miwok said the mountain was smoking, a sacred message bringer. Steaming silver Mount Tamalpais watershed rivulets running down her face, the sleeping maiden's mud mask falling off, her cheeks shedding brush and hairy trees, rocks sliding down her broken nose, but mouths kissing the sand, East Coat Creek tasting salt, tide reaching for her tears, a maternal embrace of homecoming. As I walk in this shimmering rain, I too shed water. A single letter, the difference between here and there. That is so beautiful. And I, again, one of the things that poetry can do, and definitely did right here, is go from the global, and that's a big reach across the ocean, to the very specific, the hairiness of the trunks, and then link the mud and the grief. So it has it all there. And I love the fact that both of these poems were conceived in cars, in these, you know, in these metallic <laughs> pods. But we spend a lot of time on the road. So I get a lot of my ideas exactly. in cars. Exactly. A lot of my haiku come from things that I see on the road, particularly on panoramic highway. It's kind of a flash. Uh, yes. And there yes. you have it. Would you like to yeah. share some haiku now, or well, do you want to save that? I'll, I'll just save that for the okay. end because I, I have published a lot of individual haiku, but I'm working on my first collection of haiku, uh -huh. which is going to come out this year. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had something like right. that. So, but so much you mentioned the, the um, connection between the local and the global, and this is what uh, a lot of my poetry tries to do things that I am upset about mm -hmm. that are going on in this dark world, yeah. uh, this dark time that we have right now, and I try to make a connection. Yeah. And um, <clears throat> I have um, a book of these poems that mm -hmm. is called View from the Thicket that's making the rounds right now of publishers ah. so far. Uh, nobody has taken it on. I think yeah. that it's maybe too political, too <laughs> strong. I don't know, but... To be revealed. Anyway, but this, this, this is, is a poetry, part of my work. Poetry as medicine, and I love that. Medicine for you and medicine for us. Yeah, this is a, a little poem that I uh, read for the 100,000 Poets for Change, mm -hmm. and we did this um, in uh, 2011, and it was um, archived uh, at Stanford was mm. done online and this also has not been published otherwise than being online and in that archive how poetry can change the world and these were a hundred thousand poets all over mm. the world that were writing poets on this theme truth changes humanity and its effects my poetry voices my truth just like the flowers bloom their truth here isn't it enough to just be and let be, to say yes to this world and all its living beings from the ant to the elephant? We come together in gardens and parks. May our words seed a tree of knowledge with roots spreading peace underground, arteries circling in the forest, wisdoms that reach sunlit skies, transforming toxic thoughts into caring actions, sending a green wind of words, circling the planet with love to cool the earth that burns from war. I pledge allegiance to the universe of poets, living and dead, united in visions of truth, love, and respect for all. Oh, that's fabulous. And I love from the ant to the elephant. It's so <laughs> graphic. There's graphic stuff everywhere. And I have to mention the fact that 
poetry is not your only outlet. <laughs> you do no. a lot more stuff. So let's talk very briefly about your life in art. And I well, mean, just, we don't, we don't, we're not going to get off the poetry. No, no, But no. they work together in they some way. They do work together. I have always been an artist as well. I've done both of these things since childhood. And they were on separate tracks because I wanted to be respected in my creative work. And at that time of my youth, uh, if you did more than one thing, you were thought to be an amateur, right. wasn't serious. And so, and there wasn't that much communication then either. The art people didn't know the poetry people, right. the poetry people didn't know. It, yeah. We were all in little boxes. Right. And, um, so I, I had these things in two separate tracks, and I would maybe make art um, for other people's poems, or I would make poems about other people's art, uh -huh. <laughs> but to put my poems with my art, I, I mean, it didn't come together until the 70s ah. through the women's movement. Mm -hmm. And then I was able to make a synthesis of my art, my performance in dance, and my poetry in, in art performance. Yes. And so I, that's what I was doing in Los Angeles. Mm. And now, now that I don't dance anymore and don't perform except mm -hmm. in poetry readings, yeah. uh, I'm trying to integrate my poetry within the paintings. Ah. So they dance upon the page. That's right. Yes. 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 So. Let's have another. Another poem. Yes. All right. Let's see. Give us a haiku. Give us a haiku now. For the last 10 years, I have been seriously writing haiku practically every day. And here is one. They're short three lines caught in the Mozart morning shadows. Ah. Caught in the Mozart morning shadows. That's a beauty. And at that, we will just give you that taste of haiku, and then you can go to Claudia's books and get more from our library. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Nishama. This was lovely. My pleasure. And now for our second guest, Giovanni Singleton. Welcome, Giovanni. Thank you. So glad you're here. We always like to start smack off with a poem, especially one that connects with Marin. Okay. Um, well, I'll start with a, a poem that connects with Marin, but also my students in Marin. So it's not a typical poem, um, but it's also inspired by um, the poem, The Song of Mount, the song Mount Tamalpais Sings by Lou Welch, mm -hmm. um, which has a repeating line, this is the last place there is nowhere else to go. And my version is, I am Mount Tamalpais, and this is my song. I wear a hat of clouds. My hair is a trail of snails. The sun and moon are my eyes. I am Mount Tamalpais, and this is my song. My teeth are stars shining on clear nights. My arms are log cabins. I am Mount Tamalpais, and this is my song. My voice is the sound of stellar jays in the morning. I wear a dress of tall grass. On weekends, I shimmy shake to the beat of drums. I am Mount Tamalpais, and this is my song. See me, hear me, all year long. I am more than a mountain. Mother Earth keeps me strong. I am Mount Tamalpais, and this is my song. And you certainly are. I have never um, experienced someone becoming a mountain before my very own eyes. <laughs> and it's very, very joyous. That's really fine. Do you hang out on the mountain a lot? A little? Kind of? Um, not at all, actually. <sighs> I actually see it and look at it um, more often than I've actually been on it. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it provides a sense of support and possibility for me. Uh -huh. So I love to drive by it. I love to sit at Book Passage and, yes. and look at it and watch it. And I just recently finished uh, teaching at Mill Valley, Mill Valley Middle School. Mm. And the classroom, had, I was so distracted. It's like, wow, 
<laughs> yes. It's so awesome. It is. I, and I keep thinking of Mount Fujiyama, you know, that I, I think they're kind of similar. <laughs> yes. and, uh, and I love that link. So let's not talk too much about life until we get some more poems under our belt. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, I think what I'd like to do is read a couple from my, um, my book, Ascension, which um, was inspired by the life and music of Alice Coltrane, who was married to John Coltrane. And I wrote a poem a day for 49 days while she was transitioning mm -hmm. from this life into the next life. Um, but it was inspired by a lot of things that were going around um, at the time, um, including this one, um, which is about one of the rare hikes um, taken. Uh, day 22. Paint brushes, buttercups, hemlock. Purple lupine make little beans after their flowers are gone. Three dogs, two men, three women. Eucalyptus trees whose leaves fell quite some time ago. Chamomile, forget-me-nots, sage. Mallow shoots itself up and branches into trees. We don't step on the black scarab beetle in the middle of the path, nor the lizard in sphinx pose. Ant hill, gopher, hornet's nest. We see fennel, some non-native thistle. We eat mustard flowers, taste of Dijon. Queen Anne's lace, nettle, miner's ladder. And toward the end, there's a little climb. Mm. I, I, I'm so interested in the fact that these are grief transition poems. And I hear, you know, the, from the eucalyptus that fell a long time ago, there's all that stuff of going into the earth. Yes. And what an amazing project. So were you, how, what, what was your Col Alice Coltrane connection? I mean, a flesh connection? Did you sit and hold her hand? <laughs> I <laughs> wish. I missed that opportunity, okay. but I did see her in the flesh. I um, attended her last two concerts. Mm. Well, it turned out to be the last two of her life. And I also went to her ashram in Southern California oh. um, to um, hear her. And yeah. it, was, it was amazing. I mean, she spent practically nearly an hour actually playing the Wurlitzer organ in this oh. really tiny temple yes. um, with about 10 people in attendance. It was mm. incredible. And I think I, I credit her actually with helping me to reconnect to poetry, to begin to really uncover and discover my own voice after, after graduate school. And, oh. and uh, so it was my way of purging Gertrude Stein, oh. uh, <laughs> which I who I love. But I just needed to, to, un to unwind from that, to, to step away from that. And it was through Alice Coltrane's music mm. um, which, um, that, con that I was able to connect to my own voice as well as to reconnecting to jazz. Oh, yes. Um, Your voice, by the way, is so musical, right. and I love that in a poet, and that's what, what um, watchers will get, that they, they get it on the page, but not with, it wouldn't swing quite as much. <laughs> <laughs> so another poem, please. Thank you. Um, well, I think no um, collection or, or, or poet is worth their salt without somehow connecting with love, and so I will um, I'll share a poem about a, a different kind of love. Um, this is day 18. Because he disremembered the past, the past bound itself to him. It creased his mouth, furrowed his brow, grayed his hair. When he spoke, his voice used the language of disremembering. Because he disremembered his ex-wife, their love bound itself to him. Whenever he turned around, one could see her face looking out from the back of his head. Mm, that's so paradoxical. <laughs> it's <laughs> really something. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit, first of all, about lunch poems. I just okay. love the idea of lunch poems and what you do for And that. lunch. <laughs> well, yeah. um, well, I... I I am the coordinator for the Lunch Poems Reading Series at UC Berkeley um, under the direction of former U.S. Poet Laureate Robert Hass. 
and the series happens the first thursday of every month at about twelve ten p m on the u c berkeley campus in this incredible space known as the morrison library it's actually a reading library with great sofas and chairs and so i've been coordinating the program for about three years and we invite nationally and internationally renowned poets to participate in the series and they come to campus and read for about thirty five minutes is completely free and open to the public and then afterwards the poet gets taken to lunch that sounds really joyous do you invite them i do not invite them but i do help set up the series every year so we set it up annually so what a banquet it definitely is particularly with with robert hass who is really well connected um, and has a very keen eye. He's an incredible curator. Yes. I want more poems from <laughs> you before we run out of time. Okay. Um, and this is another poem, you know, I've been teaching with um, uh, California poets in the schools for a mm. number of years. And it is true that kids say the darndest things, particularly when they don't know, you know, where it's going to end up. Um, you know, they just, they're just out with it. And so this, this poem um, came about as a result of my attempt to teach line break to a six-year-old. And I asked him for a sentence. And so his sentence um, comprises the first line of this poem. It's day 35. When I was nine years old, I killed a bird, he said. Why? I asked. Because I wanted to, to see what was inside. And did you see? I don't remember. Well, then close your eyes. Why, he asked. To see what's inside, I said. Mm, that is great. And that is one of the most universal, I think, boys. Boys <laughs> kill things, and then they experience it. But you got it. You have it in a, in a basket. Yeah. And I mean, that's, that's great. Well, it was um, quite disturbing. I mean, yeah. I, 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 I felt I had to redeem both him and the bird in some way. And you, you certainly know, so did. You I tried. <laughs> you did. I'll take another. I want, okay. I'm hungry for them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I think I will read uh, Day 39, mm-hmm. um, which is sort of a, a, an urban poem, perhaps. Um, Day 39. Black girl. You a black girl, black girl, play on black top, play, girl, black. You a black girl, jump down, turn around, black girl, sing pretty song. You a black girl, play on, merry go round. You black girl, look, merry go mad. You. Black, you, girl. Mm, that's like a kind of a collage almost. <laughs> and um, we have to acknowledge that you are one of the few, except that I may be the only black poet in Marin. Is this possible? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you. I can't me. say that I know. That. I, I've seen yeah. um, a few um, people of color at, at some of the poetry yeah. readings around. That's um, one of the hard things about living here is our relative lack of. We don't have the diversity of urban, urban places, but here you are yeah. and giving it to us, and we're very glad for it. And um, we have a, just a little time left for a short poem. A short poem? Uh, well, you know. I could do a really, really no, short no, no, poem. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, I think I will end with um, what about, uh, Mahogany. <sighs> Ecstatic song, escuchar, a mask in every note. Feather-fletched arrows due east, las palabras, a ceremonial gesture, premonitions at the landscape's edge, palatial bed of wildflowers, los ojos, an arc of rainbow light, la puerta, ears opening, a refrain as in holy ghosts. Mm, And that spreads into yet another culture. And it's just wonderful. So we still don't, I still don't know what it was like for you as a debutante. 
um, because that was very intriguing. But here you are far from that world yes. and far from 